coming up on today's show. The Rivian R1T and R1S launch at the LA Auto Show, Jaguar's I-Pace EV aces Euro NCAP crash tests, and the Tesla Model 3 is finally on its way to Europe. These stories and more coming next. I'm back in the studio and it's really nice to be filming another episode of TEN. After two full weeks away, as you might expect, there's been a lot going on, so let's get started. Our first story comes from the LA Auto Show, where automotive startup Rivian, which has been in stealth for the past nine years, unveiled its R1T electric pickup and R1S electric SUV. Based on the same quad motor, all-wheel drive skateboard and chassis, and offered with a choice of battery packs ranging from 105 kilowatt hours to 180 kilowatt hours, the R1T and R1S are aimed primarily at outdoorsy adventure types and as such are a little more Range Rover than Land Rover in their interior design. Performance is crazy too, we're talking Tesla quick, so I can't wait to see if this company makes good on its promises. Talking of Tesla, the mid-range Model 3 got its official EPA rating this week, achieving a range of 260 miles, that's 418 kilometers per charge, from its approximately 60 kilowatt hour battery pack. In the city, that translates to 128 mpg. On the highway, that's 117 mpge. And combined, it's 123 mpge. And that's less efficient than the original rear-wheel drive long-range Model 3, but it's still pretty impressive, and it's also better in terms of range than the Chevy Bolt EV or Hyundai Kona Electric. Automotive startup Byton has spent most of 2018 displaying its crazy tech-filled M-Byte and K-Byte luxury EVs, you know, with those steering wheel mounted screens. But it's finally announced it intends to start series production of its M-Byte SUV in China next year. According to the company, the M-Byte production launch will happen in April, with Chinese customer deliveries due in the second half of next year. China has always been the intended launch market for this firm, but there's no details on when the vehicles will be launched elsewhere. I'll keep you posted if that changes. As promised, Audi unveiled its e-tron GT concept car at the LA Auto Show last week, and boy is it a good looking thing. With a size and body styling similar to the Audi RS7, the e-tron GT concept is a four-door, four-seat Grand Tourer based on the same J1 platform as the Porsche Taycan. When it enters production around 2020, which Audi is already committed to, we should expect a 3.5 second sprint time, 590 horsepower from its all-wheel drivetrain, and next-generation high-power DC quick charging which should add around 80% of range in less than 20 minutes. But until it's launch, you're just going to have to sit and drool and start saving. The Jaguar I-Pace may have been on sale for a while, but this week, Euro NCAP, one of the world's leading crash test authorities, officially published its five-star rating for Jaguar's first all-electric model. It offered praise for how the I-Pace demonstrated that, quote, future vehicles will be good for the environment, but also provide high levels of safety. Less impressive, however, is the Jeep Wrangler, whose one-star test ratings were released at the same time as the iPaces results. Criticised for its lack of driver assistance features, it really was a case of the dinosaur being in this particular bunch. Kia used the LA Auto Show last week to give its US debut of the Kia Nero EV, or e-Nero as it's known in some markets, as well as hold the global debut of the next generation Kia Soul EV. While some had expected the millennial targeted CUV would come with a small 39 kilowatt hour battery pack as offered as a lower cost option on the Hyundai Kona Electric, which also shares the same drivetrain as the Nero and Soul EVs, Kia surprised everyone by announcing the Soul EV would come with a 64 kilowatt hour battery capacity. Range and pricing haven't yet been announced, but I will share them when they have. Nissan was in LA too, and while it had planned to launch its longer range Leaf E+, it pushed the launch back to CES 2019, using the arrest of its CEO Carlos Ghosn by way of explanation. And this week, we learned that Nissan has also decided to not use liquid cooling on that longer range, higher capacity Leaf E+. Instead, it's going to use an active, air-conditioned, air-cooled battery setup. It's the same system found in the Nissan ENV200 minivan, and while it is better than passive air cooling as found on other LEAF models, there are some serious doubts over how effective it'll be. Nissan, you may have just made another poor decision. Faraday Future continued its slow and painful death this past week, furloughing more of its staff and laying off others. Issuing a statement on Twitter of all places, Faraday Future took pains to lay the blame squarely at the feet of its investor Evergrande Health, which it says is refusing to make scheduled payments. 
The company says it expects a ruling on ongoing arbitration with said investor in a few months and then promises to solve its liquidity problems in a similar time frame. Honestly, though, I don't think I can believe it. As I'm sure you know, the original Boring Company Tunnel launch event got postponed earlier this year. I'm guessing the reason might have been because the Boring Company decided to give up plans to build the tunnel under certain parts of LA after local residents protested in certain neighbourhoods. However, the launch is now back on with a December 18th date, and this time Elon Musk is promising us, quote, more than a tunnel opening with modded but fully road legal autonomous transport cars and ground to tunnel car elevators. It all sounds pretty exciting. Anyone got an invite? Following the announcement by GM that it would be closing factories that made cars it wasn't making money on, and then a misguided threat by the US president that he would end all of the non-existent subsidies he claimed GM was getting unless they reopened those same factories that made the cars that were losing GM money, the US administration has turned its ire elsewhere. On to the electric car and renewable energy world. And so it's now planning to axe all tax credits for electric cars under current US federal tax law, as well as any incentives and tax credits for renewable energy projects. Instead, well, I'm guessing it wants more incentives and tax breaks for Wall Street, and of course, those coal mines Mr. Trump is so fond of that will, even if reopened, become automated and eventually run out of coal. I do try to keep this show politics free, but seriously, why the face? And now it's time for short shorts. As always, links are in the show notes below if you want to follow these stories in more depth. Electrify America has launched the first 350 kilowatt CCS quick charging station in California. The station is backwards compatible with slower charging speeds, and that's a really good thing because right now there aren't any 350 kilowatt capable cars on the market. Following the tyre tracks of its fellow countryman Jaguar, Aston Martin has unveiled its own 100% reversible EV powertrain conversion kit for classic Aston Martins. Showcased in an Aston Martin DB6 Mark II Volante, it's not clear if the kit, currently a concept, will enter into production. Following its sale to the PSA group, Opel, and thus Vauxhall, has unveiled its plans for an electric future, promising an all-electric Corsa next year and a plug-in hybrid version of the Grandland X following that. Future electric models could also include the Mocha X, but no firm commitment has been given at this time. First, it trademarked the Model E name, and now Ford has trademarked the Mark E moniker too. Mark I was used on a racing Mustang in the 60s, so Mark E certainly ties in, especially since Ford has hinted that it's going to be producing an electric Mustang-like SUV. Nissan has officially launched a pilot project in the US called Nissan Energy. It's designed to allow bi-directional charging in certain areas and eventually will offer customers the chance to earn money by feeding their car's stored energy back to the grid in peak demand periods. Following a few years of plateauing, global carbon emissions are expected to spike upwards this year, setting all-time highs. It's down to a rise in the number of cars on the road and a renaissance in coal use. China's emissions have risen by 4.7% this year, the US is by 25 and India's by 63 Only the EU emissions have remained flat after a decade of falling. If that doesn't scare you, a new study by Wood Mackenzie says it's just too late for us to ensure the Paris climate change goals are met and that we save ourselves from man-made global warming. While Europe is ahead of other continents, the report's authors say even in best-case scenarios, those goals, if met, just aren't enough to keep us safe. Tesla's Gigafactory 3 may still be under construction, but the mayor of Shanghai has been telling journalists this week that the facility will be finished and producing electric cars by the second half of next year. It's a very ambitious timeline and one which Tesla is really eager to meet. Tesla has officially opened the online configuration tool for Model 3 in Europe, allowing customers in certain European countries the ability to configure their cars. Deliveries will begin in February with priority given to high value configurations. Right hand drive countries and customers will have a longer wait. Kia has officially announced the e-Nero or Nero EV in some markets will go on sale in the UK this coming spring with a sticker price of £32,995 after incentives. Deliveries will begin in April. Volkswagen's promised long-range $20,000 electric car with Tesla-like performance has been revealed to be nothing more than a next-generation long-range Volkswagen A-Up. The tiny Super Mini is due to get a next-generation upgrade with an MEB-compatible drivetrain but it's no ID. 
Nissan has unveiled its next generation Nismo RC race car. Based on the second generation Leaf, it offers all wheel drive, 240 kilowatts peak power, and a sprint time of 3.4 seconds. Only a handful of examples will be made. Sticking with Nissan, it's just announced a 150,000 vehicle recall in Japan, including some Nissan Leafs, because of improper final inspections carried out prior to the vehicles leaving the factory. Non-conformities include improper inspections of brakes, steering systems, and stability control systems. BMW says it's considering programming its future hybrid and plug-in hybrid cars in a way that forces them to operate in electric-only mode in major cities. The idea seems to be a good one, but it's not clear how BMW would ensure that enough battery capacity was remaining for said mode. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. The Hornsdale Power Reserve, a 129 megawatt hour Tesla power bank installation in South Australia, has now been in operation for one year. And in that time, says developer Neon, it has helped save big bucks, avoiding the need for network upgrades and additional generation capacity. It's responded effectively to peak demands on the local network, supplementing power when needed, and has saved the company a total of 40 million in grid costs. And because it's connected to wind turbines, well, it's also helped provide lots of renewable electricity to homes and businesses in the area. It's official. After years of testing, you can now hail a Waymo One fully autonomous driverless taxi. At least you can in Arizona, where the service went live this week. Operating 24-7, you hail a Waymo One through Waymo's dedicated smartphone app, although for now, it still is limiting participant numbers to Waymo Early Rider Program members. Price is pretty competitive too, with a 15-minute ride costing seven bucks. Welcome to the future where our robot overlords do everything for us, and hopefully they don't have body odor problems like ye olde cab drivers. And finally, autonomous vehicle and semi-autonomous vehicle technology is getting pretty advanced, and I'm guessing that if you have a Tesla with autopilot enabled, the temptation to let your car take the strain is sometimes a little too much. Just don't be like one California man who had his car boxed in and slowed down by the California Highway Patrol this week on the freeway after he fell asleep drunk at the wheel. Thanks to Tesla's autopilot, he did survive because falling asleep at the wheel is usually a fatal thing. But as I've said it before, and I will say it again, if you have autopilot, you have to stay alert and ready to act end of lecture. And on that note, it's the end of this week's show. And don't forget to like, comment and subscribe using the links below. Hit that notification bell, buy some swag from our new shop. And if you can, please consider supporting us through Patreon. We really couldn't make this show possible without all of the fantastic support we get from our Patreon patrons. And it's never too late to become one yourself. Since we're coming to the end of this year, we're starting to work on some of our end of year specials. So I'd love to hear your favorite Transport Evolved videos from this year, as well as some of the stories that you feel have had the biggest impact in the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transport. So ping us an email, show at transportevolved.com or leave a comment below and we'll add your picks to our own. I'd also like to announce the soft launch of our new Discord chat server. Come along and join other TE fans and chat about the shows, the latest news stories and more. There's a link below to help you join in. And that is really it. All that's left for me to say now is that I hope you have a fantastic weekend and always don't forget to be better, kinder, smarter to one another. Keep evolving.